The John Morris Show, episode 116. In this episode, <laughs> there is actually an important lesson here if you're smart enough to get past the political stuff. The John Morris Show. Your life on code. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Morris. Hey everybody, welcome back to The John Morris Show and JohnMorrisOnline.com. So I sent this out in an email the other day and I wanted to go through it with you in this episode of the show. So as you probably know, there's been a lot of hubbub here in the good old US of A about Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Clinton. So it seems there's two sets of rules, one's for the Clintons and one's for everybody else. At least that's the word on the street anyway. Now, it's funny and I bring it up because it's true about a lot of things. So, for example, in the U.S., the top 1% of Americans earn 19% of all the income. And in Hollywood, the top actors always seem to get the best roles in the best movies. And in my experience, the top freelancers tend to suck up most of the clients and most of the work. For example, if you go on Upwork into the web development category, there's an agency called Mobiloit Technologies that's clocked over 63,000 hours of client services. And the next closest on the front page is a guy named Ron with 5,400. And in my experience, that's how things tend to work. Because once you establish a certain threshold of credibility and authority, you stick out like a sore thumb as being more trustworthy, and you just get a disproportionate share of the clients. It's kind of like how the first position in a Google search result will get 33% of the clicks. And just like the Clintons, there's often two sets of rules for those on top versus those struggling to claw their way up. Now, I'm not saying that it's right, but it is reality. And my job is to tell you the truth, not opine about how I think things should be. Now, don't get me wrong, old Ronnie boy over there at 5,400 hours isn't too, doing too shabby because if you do the math, that many hours at $75 an hour is a little over $400,000. So I think most freelancers would take that. But freelancers with this kind of experience and job history and skill set, they just, like it or not, they just get treated differently. So they rarely have to go out and find work on their own or go around trying to find jobs and get clients. And the reason that is, is because of all of their job history and experience, they just come up at the top of most of the web development related searches or category listings that you'll do on Upwork. So the clients just automatically tend to flow to them more. They also don't have to work nearly as hard as everybody else to sell their services. 63,000 hours with a 93% job success rate speaks for itself. And potential clients see that and they're just naturally going to trust them more. And the clients they work with, they'll rarely give them a hard time or question them because those clients know that these developers are uber experienced, they know what they're doing, and when they speak, clients listen. In fact, from my own experience, I can tell you that after I worked with Michael Hyatt on his membership site, my client experience changed dramatically, like day and night. And that's because he's not only really well known, but he's also highly respected and trusted. So just having him on my resume and his project in my portfolio brought an air of authority with it. So when I started working with clients, they would look to me for guidance. They would ask me questions and want my input as opposed to always just trying to boss me around as if I was some nobody that they could just tell what to do. My point is you shouldn't necessarily begrudge the fact that these two sets of rules exist, at least for developers anyway. <laughs> Feel free to begrudge the Clintons all you want if, if that's your thing. But instead, you should be focused on joining that elite group of developers and getting into that in club, so to speak. Now, I talk all the time 
about the outside factors that affect this, the things beyond skill, things like how well you communicate, how reliable and trustworthy you are, and how well you provide wisdom and guidance to your clients. These things are important and they matter probably more to clients, but it's also true that skill is at the center of it all. It's the cornerstone upon which Every, all of the rest of it depends. I mean, the refrigerator repairman can be the sweetest fella in the world, but if the chicken goes bad because he doesn't know what he's doing, then how sweet he is ain't going to matter. So let today be the day that you begin your journey into Clinton territory, so to speak. And that's because PHP represents 82% of all websites whose scripting language we know. And according to Indeed.com, PHP developers on average make $87,000 per year. And in the time it'd take for you to get through a montage of all the untruths Hillary told about her email server, which is about an hour, there's been 36 new PHP jobs posted over on Upwork. So why spend any more time in the little people club of developers or another moment haggling with your boss about another one of his or her brilliant ideas? Escape that nonsense and become a PHP Jedi at johnmorrisonline.com slash PHP. All right, thanks for watching this episode. If you liked it, be sure to like it so they know that you like this kind of content, although I assume there will probably be a few who won't, but that's okay. If you know somebody who'd benefit from hearing this, I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with them. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Thanks again for watching, and we'll talk to you again next time.